We are filming for ESPN in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and there is not much here. The room is really nice. Definitely one of the better ones that I've been to. We are feeding it to toprank.com. Start in the morning with a crew meeting. There's about 60 people here. I barely know anybody's names. This is my third time here, and uh, barely anybody knows me. So even though they use the same lights at every venue, when it's mixing in with house lights and other stuff, it always comes out slightly different. So we talked to the people in the truck and they say, uh, shift it a little, like I'll start with a white balance just on the chart, on the black and white part. And then they'll say, uh, bump it a little green, bump it a little magenta. And also it is just really cool to see a logo of this magnitude while on set. I did not get here by my own efforts. It was years of working with certain people and helping them out and then them helping me out and just this mutual relationship. This client is not within my reach, but when you work together with a, a good team, like uh, with Dalton Smith of NPI Productions, uh, you can get to some really, really cool opportunities. And we're done for rehearsals. Here we go, guys. It is showtime. When I had my Atlanta filmmaker meetup last month, uh, I met up with a bunch of cool people. And this guy in particular, Brandon, noticed that I was struggling with my fanny pack solution at the, uh, some previous gigs. So he gave me this. Uh, it's a really nice one by REI. And uh, let this business card in here, Brandon Davis with Color Code Studios. And uh, this is great because I'm gonna use this for these types of jobs where I need a little bit bigger compartment to put all of our batteries, gaff tape, random uh, accessories, even has a couple of cup holders uh, or quick access compartments. And uh, yeah, I'm really stoked. Thanks, Brandon, I appreciate that. I have to be really careful with these vlogs of what I'm showing and not showing. In fact, if you go back and look at the previous two ESPN vlogs that I made, they're not there anymore. Um, I decided that they revealed too much specific information uh, that ESPN or Top Rank might not want me showing, specifically dealing with the RF backpack and the way they're able to transmit it using this gimbal system. Uh, it's nothing proprietary, but it is their system, and it would be foolish of me to put it out on YouTube for everyone else to see. So going back to those two vlogs, if you have seen them, congratulations, you were the last ones to ever see it. But I mentioned in there that the whole reason we are here is to use this gimbal camera, which is an A7S III on a DJI RS3 Pro, because it is so different from what these um, standardized cameras and broadcast are that they need a specialist to be able to operate it and make it fit into their workflow. So that is our job and, you know, working with just normal gimbals and DSLRs and mirrorless for so many years has paid off in a big way that I didn't think was possible. Uh, this camera here, they call it camera six, it's their jib, is one of my favorite things to watch because it is just so cool to see the sweeping shots. And then Stitch just walks in front of your lens, um, so he's a legend too. So turning all the lights on, all the floor lights on for when the co-main and main eventers are gonna do their fighter arrivals. So they'll come into the venue and come right through this hallway and we'll back up and lead them in to those rooms at the end, which are their private, private rooms. And then the whole time we got uh, the fight going on. So this is the staging area where they hold the fighters before they walk out. So that drape will come down, that curtain. And then we have to walk backwards down these stairs. So we already did one and I didn't fall, but I had to like jump down two stairs at a time. So it wasn't the smoothest thing, but uh, we have a couple more walkouts that we're gonna do before the main event. So we'll be able to polish it up. But yeah, this is pretty hard to go down backwards while filming with a gimbal. So JD is my assistant on this one, or as they call it, the utility. So we did a couple run-throughs of him spotting me. I believe I lose my footing a couple times on here. It is just really hard, especially when you get towards the end. 
you can see my toe barely made it on there and i'm trying to frame the fighter it, it was very difficult and i'm the only one who's filming that so it's blue and then when it goes to red that means fighter walks out now so you see me going back this is the hard part it's grabbing its single pistol changing the focal length i think made it down and then lead them out to the cage it's a uh, it's a tough process actually Even though there's no memory cards in here, as long as the signal is transmitting to the truck, they are recording everything. So a lot of times they won't cut to our shot live, but we'll roll here for a few minutes. And then a couple minutes later, we'll see our shot being used as if it was live. And they're saying, oh, this fighter's ready to come out. He's all gloved up. So that's how that's utilized. And man, Brandon, this fanny pack is amazing so it's keeping my water in there keeping a v-mount battery in there which we all know how big and heavy those are and it still has room for a dji handle so amazing gift i really appreciate it it really helped us out on this one and uh that is the heavyweight fighter who ended up losing and that's all the bts i got of the main event so we get back to tulsa airport i had a conversation with a passenger who owns their own business and they also re recommended the american express platinum so i really think that's the card i'm gonna get i swear these are the best style of headphones because when you do have a monitor here you can just use the 3.5 mil to tap in so jd what do you got sony it's sony. like that mxw 1000 things oh, yeah basically the same type of thing yeah these are great if you are a fan of the filmmaker luke forsyth like i am you've heard him mention that what made him want to become a photojournalist was an old documentary called the war photographer i figured i got some time on the plane let's download it it's free on youtube i'll put it in the comments it is so good uh because they don't they don't just glorify him as a photographer they show what it's like for him to go into war-torn countries and photograph human pain and is that a benefit for him the more pain that he can show is more suffering good for his business it's a really really good perspective showing both sides who benefits uh who doesn't and how the world takes in this type of media i highly recommend it if you haven't seen it um it's really really thought provoking and it's really old too i haven't even unpacked i just got back from uh where was i T tulsa oklahoma for espn but i just got a new job assignment for today at four o'clock and it is 3 30 right now so it was very very loose i don't really know what's going to be happening it's covering a charity dinner so i'm just going to have my fx6 some sticks and then in case there needs to be any type of interview I have my lav pack in here and I'm gonna bring my GVM panel. I really like this because it's small. Uh, it takes battery power and it's so light that I can just bring a lightweight stand. So this is the extent of what I'll be bringing. Like I said, I don't really know exactly what's gonna happen, but um, this is what we'll be equipped with. That is why I literally always keep my batteries charged because you never know when a shoot is gonna come up. Once I arrived, I found out that this kid was involved with the Make-A-Wish Foundation and that his mom uh, wanted to have a big party with his family members and a chef and document the whole night having fun and laughter. So I immediately asked if I could put a microphone on him uh, so I could get every bit of word and dialogue and emotion coming from him and his mom was very happy with that idea so he was mic the entire time and out of respect for them i'm not showing any faces uh, but we were inside and then we moved outside this camera setup worked great for that and uh, that's what i just wanted to be a fly on the wall that did not cause attention to myself just like i said keeping it respectful I'm, i don't really want to show anything um but i am going to get the tripod and uh, I'm gonna, you know, cancel out all of the handheld movement by using my tripod, and that will, I think, uh, convey the message just to focus on the person who's on camera. Um, so just trying to make these creative decisions that are determined by technical decisions uh, work as best as possible. 
Yeah, I love having these little lights. Because you never know what you're going to need, and they're super fast to set up. And that was a very different type of job than I normally do, but it really, there is a crossover from the work that you don't want to be doing to the work you do want to be doing. Just experience in the video world helps. And a lot of my recent documentary work has really helped carry over to this. So yeah, that was a really, really unique type of job. And then a nightmare situation. The mom asked if I could do a private interview with the kid and say what he thought about each family member. I filmed it, heartwarming. Uh, I kept the camera rolling and then black. It shut off, I wasn't monitoring the V-mount levels, so I knew there's a chance that this file is corrupted. Put the new V-mount battery in, was able to restore the file, played it back to make sure, but imagine losing that video clip for a situation that this kid is in. Um, all the more reason to get a V-mount battery system that allows you to keep a Sony VPU in there for moments like that but it worked uh, we got through in my last video a ton of you guys mentioned what your preferred wireless audio solution is and it was a resounding answer of the Sony UWPs so I'm gonna look into those because I love these road filmmaker kits but they are just so big and when you put them on a kid or a fitness person with tight clothing they're just troublesome and the wire sticks out too much. So I'm gonna do a little bit more research, but it seems like the Sony's or the new Rode Go Pros might be a good call. This is a new product for me. Uh, the company sent it to me for free. I, whoops. I don't care if uh, it's good or bad. I will let you know. The reason uh, I said yes to it be, was because it might give me uh, the same type of thing that I was able to achieve on my C70. So I'll go more into that on the next one. But I'm going to wear this hat at the next filmmaker meetup that I'm holding in Dallas on September 17th. So I'll post the address. But for anybody who is looking to come and meet some new filmmakers, I've already got a really good response. I'll probably do an RSVP. Um, we're going to do it big in Texas.